Hi, this is Craig Stocks here for Utah Desert Remote Observatories. You can find us online at utahdesertremote.com. And today I want to talk about how to get a really clean starless image the smart way. So we're going to use this image as our example, and this is IC4685. I don't know that it has a, uh, a more poetic sounding name. Uh, it kind of looks like the Cat's Paw Nebula, but it's not. It's uh, just uh, adjacent to the Lagoon Nebula, almost part of that same complex. Uh, this is in a rather unusual uh, OHS color palette. Uh, that may put some of you off, some of you may like it. I happen to like the colors even though it's not at all natural. But the thing I want to talk about is when you produce a starless image, and especially if you're really doing much processing and pushing the channels very much, you can get a lot of artifacts that don't show up when the stars are there, or at least they're not as obvious because the stars kind of disguise that. Uh, and a lot of them are little residual pieces of stars and diffraction spikes. Uh, but when you produce a starless image, you really see them. So let's pop over to kind of the original. And here I have the, the base image and then the stars on top. And, you know, it looks okay. Uh, stars look good with it. But if I turn the star layer off, you'll see there's still a lot of noise, a lot of residual here, some uh, diffraction spike residual, uh, lots of speckles. Uh, just not a very clean image. And like I say, this, uh, you, you try to clean these up when you're processing, but uh, frequently you'll find that they're, they're just kind of, the more you process, the more they come out. So an easy way to approach these, uh, a destructive way, but an easy way, and I'm going to start by just unlocking this background layer by clicking on the, the lock icon. One thing that you might do uh, is grab the spot healing brush and it works really well for smaller areas where you have like a hot pixel like this. Uh, just a quick click and it goes away. Uh, but it is a somewhat tedious process and sometimes it does leave little residuals. Uh, so it's it works well for a few spots. Uh, not very good when you get into some of these larger areas where there's just you know, hundreds or thousands of little spots. So an easier way to do it is uh, I'll show you the unsmart way and then we'll do it the smart way. Uh, I'm going to make a copy of this layer, which is part of why this is the unsmart way, because anytime you duplicate a layer, uh, you're probably going down a destructive work path workflow. Uh, and I'm going to delete this after I demonstrate what we're doing. But what I want to do is apply two filters and, and then use a mask to apply them selectively. The first is that I'm going to use the dust and scratches filter. And that, you know, in the old days before there were programs like uh, Starnet++ and now Star Exterminator, which really do a great job, uh, the dust and scratches filter was how we got rid of stars. So if you go to Filter, Noise, Dust and Scratches, and I've already worked on this image, so I know around a six pixel radius will work well. Uh, but basically you would slide the uh, radius slider back and forth until it's getting rid of the, the things you want to get rid of uh, and nothing else. And generally you'll have the threshold set at zero. So when we apply that, now again, we're applying a filter, so that's a permanent change to this layer. One of the problems you find is it creates a very you know, smooth, almost too smooth effect. Uh, and to demonstrate that, I'm going to add a layer mask by clicking on the, uh, this looks like a front-loading washer icon at the bottom. And then I'm going to invert the mask, so I'll click on the mask so it's active rather than the image itself and I'll invert the mask so that it hides everything, just control I. And so now we're hiding everything on this layer. And I'm going to grab the brush tool and I'm going to paint with white as my color at 100% opacity and 100% flow. And let me paint over some of these areas that have a lot of problems. 
and you can see that it just looks kind of smeared and flat. So what we really want to do is also apply some noise so that it matches and blends in with the rest of the image. So to do that I'm going to go to filter, noise, add noise. And generally it's going to be a pretty small amount but it will depend on the resolution of your image. In this case it's somewhere around probably two and a half to three pixels will do a good job. And what I'm looking at is the noise profile in this area where I painted painted with white to reveal the underlying layer and click OK and we'll see how it looks and try to compare it to areas around it. It's a little hard to see here and, and that's part of the problem with doing this the non-smart way. Um, now that I've applied that I can undo it uh, if I want to try a different amount uh, filter, so I just did an undo from history, go back to noise, add noise, uh, let's try four pixels, let's see what that, oh, um, let me undo this, here's the problem, if you see there's a double outline around the uh, mask icon on the layer, that tells me I've actually selected the layer mask rather than the layer itself. So I need to click on the layer thumbnail. That moved the double outline over here. Now when I apply my filter, noise, add noise, now I'm applying it where I want to. So it's actually applying it. So now you can see that it's at four pixels, it's too strong. At two, it's, let's say two is okay for now. And sometimes it will look a little bit different after you've applied it. So that does a better job of blending this in. What I really want to do though is hide all of this. So I'm just going to fill this layer with the background color, which I can do with the keyboard sh shortcut control backspace. So now everything is black. Again, I'll grab my brush tool. I'm going to make it much smaller now and just paint white over the areas where we have the offending spots and the more detail is in the area the smaller brush I need to use. And you can see as I go through here I can just very quickly tap or paint and start cleaning up these offending areas. And let me just switch back over to my finished image. So this is with it finished, and if I turn off the, the dust and scratches filter and the noise filter, that was before, that's after. So let's do this the smart way though. And to do it the smart way, I'm gonna start by just getting rid of this duplicate layer because we don't wanna do that. We don't wanna duplicate a layer and then work on it. Uh, because, for instance, if I got all done and then decided that my noise that I added was too strong or too weak, I don't have the ability to change it anymore, and we want to be smarter than that. And the way to do that is by using a smart object. What a smart object does is it encapsulates the original layer or file or data uh, and then lets you apply filters or other processes to it non-destructively, but you can undo, redo, change, you can go back to the original. Uh, it gives you a lot more flexibility and a truly non-destructive workflow. So to do that I will right click on the layer and choose convert to smart object. And the only real change we see is there's a little icon, a little badge here on the thumbnail and that tells me that this layer is actually a smart object. If I want to get to the original I can just double click on the layer thumbnail and it will open the original layer. I can make changes to this and when I click to close this it will say it will automatically save it. If I had made changes it would ask me if I wanted to save the changes and it will replace the smart object with the edited version. So I have access to the original data but I can also apply filters non-destructively. So for instance I can apply my filter noise, dust and scratches filter 
and we'll just use the same settings that we used before. Then I'm going to apply the filter noise, add noise, because that seemed to work pretty well with around 2%. Click OK. And notice that a smart object now shows some things below the layer. And if those aren't showing up, you can use this little disclosure triangle over on the right to either collapse or expand the smart filters. Two notable things here. First is the smart filters come with a mask, so I can mask the effect of these filters. Second, each filter is shown individually. I can change the order of the filters by moving one up or down. Uh, but I can also, for instance, if I want to change the amount of noise I'm adding, I can double click on Add Noise. And let's just do something crazy. Let's go to 8%. Click OK. And now we're applying 8% noise. That appears to be way too much. So let me double click on Add Noise again. And let's go to 2.2. Press Enter. And for now, we'll say that that's a good amount. Uh, as we go further along, if we decide we want to change it, as you can see, we can change it. Now I want to use this layer mask to hide these smart filters that we're applying. And so again, I'll click on the layer mask thumbnail. And black is my background color, so I'll tap Control Backspace. And that will hide everything. It'll basically invert this mask. Now, with the mask selected, so the double outline is around the mask, I can use my brush tool and paint with white. And it's really the same thing I was doing before. The difference is that now it's non-destructive. It, I can change the, the blur amount, the radius of the uh, dust and scratches filter. And basically what I'm doing is just going through here with the white brush and selectively revealing the spots where I want to apply the noise reduction or the uh, dust and scratches filter. So this can be a little bit tedious, but the advantage is when you get into large areas that don't have much detail, you can use a larger brush. If you decide that's too much, just undo it or paint with black to paint it back. Go to a smaller brush, tap the X key to change to white, and come in and paint with a smaller brush. So it's a little bit tedious. Uh, I can guarantee, though, you won't spend as much time doing this as you spent capturing the original data. Uh, in this case, it's only about two and a half hours of data, which is part of why I have so many artifacts. And the artifacts are especially in the um, oxygen layer, which uh, is really being pushed pretty hard to get this color palette and this much detail from the oxygen. The hydrogen is uh, much cleaner. Uh, sulfur is better, but you just work your way through the, the document, keep zooming in and finding more and more offending areas. And when you're done, if I switch back over to my finished image, kind of like the cooking show where they pull the, the finished pie out of the oven. So here it is applied throughout the image. And if I alt click on the mask, it'll show us what the mask looks like. So that's what the mask looks like. You can see some areas where I painted with a very broad brush and a lot of areas where I zoomed in rather small. And the difference is how much detail is there. If it's an area with a lot of detail, then you use a small brush and just knock out the little offending detail. If it's an area that doesn't have much detail, you can paint with a broad brush. And then I'll click on the mask again to bring it back. So, that's the way to use a smart object and a couple of smart filters and the corresponding layer mask that comes with the smart filters to quickly, relatively quickly, and very effectively clean up a, a very noisy image that's filled with the uh, star removal artifacts to go from this to this. Hope you found that useful. If you have any questions, be sure to drop them in the comments. And as always, if you find this useful, uh, be sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel. And you can be notified whenever I produce a new video. 
Uh, most of them have to do with Photoshop, which is a, a critical part of my astrophotography workflow. So with that, I think I'll wrap it up here. I hope you have a great day today and an even better night tonight under a clear, dark sky. Thanks.